Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Song Won Han. First name is Song Won. Last name is Han. I'm the program coordinator of educational culture policy and society at University of Buffalo. Uh, today, I'm going to cover uh, overall features of ECPS program and then overview of master degree program as well as PhD degree uh, program. Whenever you have some clarification question, just please stop my presentation and then raise your question, then I'll address it. So uh, this is the uh, presentation uh, order that I'm gonna cover today. Then let me start from the why uh, you might should you select UB for your degree program. And uh, as you may know, UB is one of the research intensive public university dedicated to academic excellence and making a positive Im impact on the world, and not only the United States, but around the world. And our uh, uh, world-class faculty are uh, very strong researchers and transformative educators and different, uh, difference makers uh, locally and globally. Uh, I really wanna highlight that our PhD Excellence Initiative now seeks to ensure that our PhD programs remain among the strongest in the world. And then we have uh, very talented students come from around the world uh, so that we have very diverse uh, student uh, population at UB. And I really wanna highlight that Buffalo may be very famous for snowstorm, but we have very beautiful, affordable city uh, uh, here. And uh, our Educational, cultural, policy, and society, we call it as a ECPS, is uh, located within the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy. There are three doctoral programs, and one of them is ECPS. And for master degree program, there are four, and our program, uh, ECPS master degree program. And... Uh, our ECPS master degree program, if you are full-time student, then you could finish this work uh, within the three full-time semesters. If you wanna pursue PhD degree as a full-time, we expect a minimum five, and then depending on your uh, schedule, maybe uh, one or two years could be added, but the, our goal is to finish your work uh, by, within five years. And why you should select ECPS program? Because we really uh, prepare uh, graduates to work in a variety of roles, such as uh, faculty, research analysts, policymakers, administrators in post-secondary education institutions, international development or human agencies, ministers of education and schools. Please note that uh, those kind of faculty job is only available for PhD graduates, not for master degree holders. And we, our one of the key features of our program uh, is focus on the links between the educational institution uh, from pre-primary or uh, preschool program through 16 plus. That means you could cover a uh, postgraduate school program as well as a uh, transition to labor market. And then what's the relationship between these kind of educational institution and then broader social, cultural, political, economic forces and uh, consequences. And then you're gonna receive very individualized attention from our core faculty members. And uh, we mainly examine underserved populations such as gender, national origin, race, ethnicity, language status, socioeconomic status, uh, among others in education and social environments nationally and cross-nationally. And then we highlight really uh, and value mixed method research training, uh, quantitative and qualitative in examining your research questions. And then uh, our ECPS faculty members uh, brought uh, more than $5 million uh, in external funding for research over the past couple of years uh, from major funding agencies such as National Science Foundation and Spencer Foundation. 
And opportunities exist for especially PhD students to participate in research grant working side by side with uh, our faculty members. And then our faculty members publish uh, uh, research articles in top tier journals, uh, such as American Educational Research Journal, Anthropology and Education, Quarterly, Teachers College Record, among others. And our students also have published articles in notable journals and won highly prestigious national dissertation grant award and presented the, their research papers in high profile peer reviewed conference venues such as AERA, uh, American Education Research Association, uh, CIS is for Comparative International Education, AAA is Anthropology, uh, ASA is uh, American Sociological Association, etc. And then these papers are coming from their coursework paper, and then they develop to the conference paper and then ultimately publish their papers at top tier journals. We also offer opportunities to pursue research design certificate as part of your coursework, including advanced certificate in statistical data analysis, qualitative research method, and international education data analysis. What it means is when you take a course for the fulfillment of your degree, that course is, if it's included in the certificate, then that could be counted simultaneously so that the, you could walk out with the degree as well as the certificate at the same time. This is applicable for both the master degree and PhD degree. Uh, in the past, one of my advisors as a master student, he completed master degree under my supervision and then he also obtained uh, statistical data analysis certificate. And let me introduce our core faculty members. Uh, our core, to, core faculty members are three. Uh, one is uh, Lois Wise, Dr. Lois Wise. Uh, she is a SUNY Distinguished Professor and Dr. Jun Ting Wu. Uh, she finished her degree in Educational Policy Studies and Anthropology. She has a double degree. And she is an associate professor and she is an ECPS MA degree program coordinator and co-director of Qualitative Research Method Certificate. And then my name is Song Wan Nan. I'm also a core faculty member of ECPS. I finished my degree in sociology at University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm the program coordinator of ECPS PhD program and director of International Education Data Analysis Certificate. And then we also have affiliated faculty member, uh, Dr. Jae Kyung Lee. He's in uh, counseling school and education psychology program. Our faculty members' research interests are very diverse. Uh, we examine our institution's policy and practice that facilitate or limit individuals' well being and social economic equity. We also examine the interaction between policy, practice, discourse, and education reforms. We also interest in cross-national comparison of educational policies, practices, and outcomes that are central to policymakers and school leaders around the world. We also pay attention to uh, our main field of uh, area will be sociology of education and anthropology of education. Those, uh, I just put some uh, book title page that our faculty members published over the past couple of years. So let me introduce the ECPS master degree program here. Uh, the master degree program uh, focused uh, on uh, exploration, the role that education plays in society. So you will learn how institution policies and practice facilitate and limit individuals' well-being and social and economic outcomes. And uh, master degree uh, program requires uh, 32 credit hours Coursework will be very interdisciplinary in nature. And then you could take courses from multiple departments such as educational leadership and policy, sociology, anthropology, history, gender and sexuality studies, among others. And then this program is designed for flexibility to pursue your own interests. So we do not require uh, any core courses. You could pull out the courses that fit to your best interest. So, uh, you should take uh, 10 courses, that is a, a 30 credits, and then plus two credits for your cumulative uh, project guidance at the end of the uh, master degree program. 
And then I listed a couple of uh, exemplary courses you could take, but you don't have to select the courses from only this list. As I told you before, you could select courses uh, upon uh, the advisor's guidance that fit to your best interest and then your career goals. Of course, you should pay attention to inequalities in education, but you could take courses from multiple departments. This is the sociology courses that we send our students, uh, anthropology courses or counseling courses or history courses. And then after you take 10 courses, you have to complete a master project. This is an independent project as agreed upon with your advisor. And this project can be an extension of any empirical paper you developed out of your coursework. Okay, then let's move to the PhD program. So PhD program, we specifically scaffold uh, this PhD program to produce high quality dissertation that could lead to your uh, career goals, either a faculty job at the institution or policy analyst, uh, administrators, et cetera. So you have to first complete substantive knowledge courses uh, in educational leadership policy or sociology, anthropology, among others. Then like the substantive knowledge that is related to your dissertation topic. Of course, we have a couple of required courses. If you go to our website link, you could find out core required uh, substantive knowledge courses and then electives list. Of course, electives could be beyond that list. And then we strongly uh, train, rigorously train our students for research method, both uh, uh, for both quantitative and qualitative. So you should take two statistical analysis courses for quantitative research method. And then you should also take one year long, two semesters qualitative research method courses. It doesn't matter whether you're gonna use qualitative method or quantitative method for your dissertation. You should complete this minimum requirement research method courses as a PhD student. The reason we have this kind of requirement is now in educational field, uh, mixed method research team is quite popular concept so that the, you have to work with uh, other colleagues who use different research methodology. Uh, although you are qualitative, you might need to collaborate with the quantitative researchers or vice versa. So you have to understand each other's camps, uh, their logic research method uh, to address the same question as a one team. And we also highlight that academic writing courses such as ELP 591, academic writing, or ELP 599, writing dissertation proposal. This is the formal curriculum that required for our PhD students. And then as an extra core curricular activity, we offer a professional development for our graduate students uh, annually. I'm gonna cover uh, what topics will be covered for this professional development uh, in the next slide. After you complete all required courses, we have ECPS, a PhD preliminary examination paper. If you are full-time student, you will join this pooling group in year three. The process is uh, uh, in details are available on our website. The main idea is you might have one empirical paper either from qual method, qualitative method course or advanced quantitative method course or seminar course as your final paper. Then you bring those paper to ECPS preliminary examination process. Throughout a year, you will have a very intensive workshop with uh, ECPS core faculty members in each semester. We're gonna offer very extensive feedback about your paper, you revise it, and then you uh, submit the paper uh, at the end of the academic year. So this is not exactly the like a paper pencil exam type of task. We really wanna teach you how to write a strong empirical paper that could be the basis for your publication or dissertation later. After you finish this year three preliminary examination paper, uh, you will move to dissertation proposal and then finish your dissertation. 
uh, we specifically offer this kind of extra uh, curricular activities to uh, help you to transit to your next step in your career. And this is not uh, only designed for PhD students. This is designed for both uh, master students and then PhD students. For example, in the past, we offer how to publish in top tier journals as a graduate student, applying for external grants to support your dissertation and postdoctoral research, or how to transit your dissertation to a book uh, after finishing your PhD degree. If you do qualitative dissertation, uh, you could, uh, some people publish their dissertation as a book, but the, you cannot immediately transit to that stage. You have to modify your manuscript that fit to the book format. So we teach how to prepare this kind of transition. And then we also offer how to get an academic job preparing for uh, and executing academic job search, like how to prepare academic job market. Uh, this year, we also invite uh, our alumni to get a job in non-academic sector after finishing the PhD degree to show how you could use your PhD degree to pursue uh, non-academic jobs too. So this is like some photos that we had in the past. Uh, so this is quite a uh, uh, very important uh, a core curricula, one of the extracurricular activities for our graduate students. And I also want to highlight that ECPS has a really great, strong, supportive community among students between faculty and students. So we uh, encourage our students to present their work at the annual Graduate School of Education Student Research Symposium in every spring semester. This is a great uh, venue for students to experience how to present their work at the symposium. And then we also uh, encourage our students to attend uh, professional organizations such as uh, uh, American Educational Research Association annual meeting. And then whenever we went there, we also uh, throw annual ECPS uh, gathering with the current students and then alumni. Because of the COVID, we haven't done it for a couple of years, but the, we did pre, at the pre-pandemic uh, years. We also have annual ECPS community party. And uh, in October, our department chair invited international students to his home and then had a party among all international students in our department. So I really wanna highlight that uh, it's very critical to have this kind of a supportive peer group and then faculty group uh, to finish your degree successfully. And uh, the next section will cover funding opportunities. So we have scholarships and fellowships. Uh, one is presidential fellowship. This is highly competitive and offered at the university level. And then we also have uh, Arthur Schomburg graduate fellowship. This is only eligible for U.S. students who are fall into underrepresented minority racial group categories. So if you go to website, you could see your eligibility for this uh, fellowship. And then there is a UB Graduate Opportunity Program and then GSC, Graduate School of Education, uh, Graduate Assistantship. And uh, you might also have opportunity to work with uh, faculty members at a uh, research grant. And then this requires rigorous research method training, either quantitative or qualitative. So how to apply? So application components uh, is same for both the master degree and PhD degree. You should write it down. Statement of research interest and career goals for master and then PhD degree. So I strongly recommend you to go to our website, read our features of the program carefully, and then see whether your own goals might be aligned with our ECPS program goals. And we require three letters of uh, recommendation letter for PhD and two letters of recommendation for master degree. Please uh, obtain this letter from the faculty members who could talk who could uh, uh, talk about your uh, preparedness for graduate level of education, especially for PhD. We strongly recommend you to get a letter 
who could attest, uh, testify about your analytic skills, writing uh, skills, thinking skills, colli collegial ability, your personality, etc. Uh, a few weeks ago, I read a couple of applications and a couple of them received a recommendation letter from the like a pastor, church, uh, pastor from the church. That's, that might be work out for uh, undergraduate program application, but not for master degree or PhD degree level. So if you graduate uh, your uh, master degree or PhD degree long, long time ago, please get a letter, at least one faculty member who could talk about your research capacity, especially for PhD. If you are a master's degree student, you should contact your undergraduate instructor who observe your uh, performance in class setting in terms of discussion, thinking, writing, among others. Uh, you should also offer unofficial transcripts so that the, we uh, take a look at the, what courses you took, how is your performance, etc. And then you should solve a sample of academic writing. Uh, this might be range from 15 to 20 pages with a double space. Please note that this is not about the space for uh, describing your autobiography. We want to see whether you could uh, write uh, academically. It doesn't matter that is produced in like a, a non-education majors. It could be journalism, it could be history, but then we want to see whether you could write academic context or not. Uh, this is applicable to both uh, master degree and PhD degree. Uh, for funding, please indicate uh, in fellowship and scholarship on your application. Then after we make an acceptance decision, the GSE scholarship committee will make a decision. This is not about individual faculty member decisions. So we cannot tell you whether you could receive funding or not when uh, you are admitted to our program. It will be decided after the acceptance. So application deadline, ECPS PhD fall admission is January 1st, uh, 24. Please, this is the hard deadline, so you have to unload everything by January 1st. And uh, we do not have spring admission. We only have one admission in fall for PhD. For master degree, spring 24 admission, uh, priority deadline is November 1st, already passed. And then rolling over until January 10th uh, for uh, spring 24 admission. And if you are thinking about fall 24 admission, February 1st is priority deadline and then rolling over until August 10th. But the, please note that faculty members are very busy during the summer and the review process will be very slowed down so that I strongly recommend you to complete your application packet by May 19, uh, 24, if you are applying for fall 24 admission for master degree then we're gonna make a decision uh, very quickly. If you wanna know uh, how our current students uh, testify our programs, you could contact these three persons. Bing Wan Tian, uh, she is Chinese international student, second year in ECPS. She's a recipient of presidential fellowship. So uh, she is still working on her uh, coursework. Nunu uh, is a third year of PhD student in ECPS. So she received the multiple funding. One is the graduate opportunity program from UB and then uh, a graduate assistance now. And uh, she's working on ECPS preliminary examination paper process. And Iman uh, is working on her dissertation proposal and she's a recipient of Schomburg Fellowship. So I've already uh, get a permission from them that uh, potential applicants who wanna hear from the current students, then they know that you could reach out to them so that the, uh, you could send an email to him, them and then ask questions. Okay, that was it. Oh, this is deadline is wrong. January 1st is a solid deadline. Uh, I, I forgot to update this one. 
So that is my old presentation slide. So I'm going to stop here. And then if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those questions for the uh, rest of our time. Any questions? Um, I don't have any questions, but I just want to say thank you so much for the comprehensive overview. Um, this was very detailed. I think I, all my questions that I did have prepared were answered along the way. Um, so much appreciated. I also appreciate um, the current students um, as well in order to speak with them about their experience. So thank you so much for sharing that. Great. And then I really want to highlight one more time for admission process. It's very critical to fit <laughs> between your own research interests and career goals and our program mission and goals. So take a look at our website information very carefully and then try to think about whether there is any fit between you and our program. This is applicable to both master and PhD. And if you are pursuing PhD degree, then you should go one step further, which is take a look at our faculty, core faculty members research area. And we also update all our recent publication, grant, uh, conference presentation. In addition to our website information, if you Google it, you could go to Google Scholar and type our name, then you could see how we pursue our research interests and research method, and then see whether there is any fit between the, our core faculty members' research interests and your research interests. Because for PhD, you should work with the faculty for more than five years. And the, this is more about mentor and mentee relationship to teach how you could grow as a scholar, as a researcher, as a policy analyst, so that it's very critical to have fit between program, faculty members, and your own interest. Any other questions? No? Wow. That was a very fast presentation. I hope that you uh, have some clear understanding about what we wanna see in your application packet. Please remember, we conduct more holistic, comprehensive assessment. It was not just about your uh, GPA or major. No, we wanna see your entire packet and then how we could create better community as a scholar uh, in ECPS together. So please uh, pay attention to each component. That's why we require a list of four PhD, two rec uh, three recommendation letters are required. And you could get a letter from your current uh, work supervisor, but we strongly recommend you to get a letter from your former faculty members who could testify your readiness or preparedness for your rigorous PH training. And this is also applicable to master degree application too. So you should contact a uh, best instructor who could testify your readiness and career goals, whether that is fit to our program or not. So do not get a letter from your high school teacher or your uh, some uh, volunteer organization supervisor they could talk about your collegiality or work ethics, but we also want to see how you are prepared for rigorous academic training at the graduate level. So it's very critical to have a recommendation letters and writing sample too. We read all writing sample very carefully to see whether you are ready for some type or some form of academic writing. It doesn't matter whether that is the education field or non-education field but the, we wanna see whether you have strong writing training at your undergraduate level of a degree or a master degree.
Um, Dr. Han, I actually did have a question with regards to the writing sample. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, I have a, an undergraduate versus a graduate. I have two different writing samples and they're two different types of writing, um, one being a literary analysis and one being a research proposal. Um, is there a type that is preferred over um, the, the type of writing? Not exactly. I mean, you should decide whether you're going to go with undergraduate versus a uh, master's mm -hmm. degree writing sample. But uh, for PhD, you might want to go with a more a gradual level of writing sample rather than the undergraduate level of writing sample. And the writing sample is to show evidence that your academic writing skills, it, it doesn't matter whether the format or the genre doesn't matter. I mean, it would mm -hmm. be great if you have some master thesis or a research paper, then you could unload those as a writing sample. But if it is too lengthy, it's more than 20 pages of uh, maybe your thesis could be 50 pages, then I strongly recommend you to uh, show it down to like up to 20 pages so that the, you could deliver main idea. But the, definitely the genre doesn't matter for writing sample. Is it answer to your question or not? Perfect, thank you very much. Sure. Anyone else?